Um, now, now we're going to take a deeper look on how the San Juan scene was lighted. And I'd like to start by giving you an advice. And this advice is uh, you have to start working step by step and little by little on your scene. And by this I'm referring that the lighting process can get confusing and complicated at some times. And this is because there are many things involved like lights and cameras. Also there are the scales, the props, and all of them are involved in the final process of lighting. That's why if you don't take uh, small steps you can get very confused and very complex. Now the, the one of the thing, first things you have to do is to put your key light and this is the most important light the one that has more energy more light for the case it can be a sun a big lamp or a flash flashlight and and having this uh, this first stage of the scene we can start working on top of this and adding detail to the lights the key light is not uh, always the one that has the biggest energy or the more light it can get in the scene but it's the one that will define that uh, color or that mood in the scene most of the time it's the sun uh, as you can see here this this sunlight it's a v-ray sun and the parameters that are involved in this one it's almost uh, the ones that come as default when you drag and drop it and what I wanted to do is to create uh, some kind of uh, lighting that resembles some kind of the ones I have in my references files. In some of them I have uh, exact references of what happens when light goes inside a warehouse like the one we have. Just like this one, this is a very clear example. And as you can see most of the light that it's coming to the scene comes from the sun. These other kind of scenes have more lights and it will be useful later later on. But this is a great uh, example of what I'm looking for to my scene. I'll pass my references to my second monitor. And just as I said at the beginning, we'll begin, we'll start working little by little and we'll begin with the sun setup. And now this is where the a plugin I already talked about in a, in a different chapter will start playing its game, its magic. And it's called Solid Rocks. I'm not going to talk a lot on, on the plugin because there are many tutorials in internet and it will be very long to explain all the functionality on it. I just want to say that I didn't make a lot of uh, tweaking here in the plugin. I'm uh, just using most of the presets here in this bar. So what the plugin will be doing is uh, when I slide this bar will change the parameters in the render in V-Ray so I can move from very simple setups of light or parameters of light to very complex and more detailed and advanced uh, options and simply by moving this bar here. I'll start working with a very small, well, a kind of small re resolution, about 1000 pixels. And being just the beginning, I'm going to work with a very basic stuff for the V-Ray setup and also with the plugin with the solid rocks. That way I can see the results very fast. And I'm going to be turning on each light uh, separately so you can see what happened with each one and how it affects the scene. I'll hit render and the only light that we'll be looking at how it affects the scene is the sun we have here. And let's see what, what result do we get from this. The render time for sure would be very fast at this point. So uh, if the time were longer, it would be very hard to see, uh, have a, an effective pipeline to see the results on what we are doing. And at this point, this is a relatively fast render from V-Ray. Um, let's see what, what we're getting at. And what I'm looking at these first stages of rendering, it's that I want to be sure that the scales are correct, the parameters are correct, and and uh, that that uh, with not that much effort on the scene, it uh, it begins to look good. And in this uh, render, I kind of like it very much uh, how much light it's coming from the door and the windows. I also like like the intensity of the light, and it's a very good start for the scene at this point. Very good. 
the next thing that I'm gonna do is start turning on uh, some of the layers that I have hidden here so we can start looking on how light affects uh, the other objects in the scene I'll turn on the layer of the structure of the markets and of course I'll get uh, more detail and a lot more a lot more information that it's uh, actually on the scene at this point so I'll make another test render for the whole scene and I'm gonna look how the sun affects my scene in a more global way <clears throat> And we have when here we have a very similar result to the one we already have here. But but even at this point, I can start seeing some uh, bleeding from the from the floor to the this part of the structures. And I'm starting that this to feel that this scene will look very nice. This is a very very simple setup. Is uh, what we just have here. It's a single light, no more. And my solid rocks preset, it's the most basic of all. And as you can see, we're getting a very decent result overall. So now what we'll be starting to do is add more detail uh, and put some lights where I want to draw the viewer's attention on the scene. So now this is a good moment to get back to my references and take a look at what I'm, I would like to have in my scene. There are two or three particular images that really, really draw my my attention on how the lights are lit. This is one of them. I really love how the fruits are lit here, and also how the colors are presented to the viewer of the photo. This is a great reference on what I'm looking for. But there's another one, just like this one, that I also like it a lot. I really like the intensity of the lights, this uh, yellowish tint. I, I really, really like this photo. And also I have another photography that I like a lot. Just let me find it for you. Um, and it's, it's this one photograph. I really love the intensity of the lights. I really love it. And also the contrast of, on the fruits is great. So this is what I'm looking for. Uh, I'm what I want to get in my next lightning stage. So before we pass to uh, unhide a lot of objects here, I'm going to work like this so we don't have uh, high render times at this point. And so the, the next step will be, okay, let me just uh, turn on some of these structures here. And I'm going to turn on this uh, light that I call it Puesto Uno. As you can see, this is a spherical V-ray light nothing fancy but as you can see the intensity parameters are really high mainly because this is small light if I had a bigger light of course the intensity of it uh, would be lower and I'll start making some test uh, testing this this light if I like how this uh, light works I might just clone it into a different kind of areas in my scene remember that at the beginning of this chapter we said that we'll be going step by step so I won't be adding a lot of lights until I like the the first one. Okay, so I'll begin with a render uh, with just two lights. One will be just the plain sun and the other will be the light that will be filling this area. And at this point in the render I'm starting to look that the light actually looks pretty, pretty nice. I'm liking the scene and I just have two lights, uh, mainly just a sun and again it's just the sun and uh, this light just filling this area and I'm really liking how the parameters are working. Yeah, in fact I'm liking it a lot, I'm really liking the intensity of it, uh, how it feels here and uh, also the color, the tint, it has, it has a yellowish tint that I took from the references. Yeah, I really like really like how this is coming out maybe the next step would be to clone this same uh, light so over here so I can replicate more or less the same intensity all over the scene 
And here I want to point out something that I think it's important. At some point I got a critic about the image that uh, the intensity of the light was not consistent with the actual size of the light bulbs that are in the scene. And maybe the comment is okay because uh, as you can see the intensity is pretty high. But also uh, someone once told me that uh, in this industry if it looks okay then it is okay. <laughs> so I'm giving you this advice because some people tend to be very orthodox on doing the things or, or do it physically correct and sometimes it's not possible. But also I've known that in most of the people I know uh, have their turnaround, their cheat kind of cheatings and their way of doing things in the best way uh, and look good. As simple as it, if it looks good it's okay and I think it's the specific case of this this light. Maybe the parameters of it are pretty high, the intensity is also high, but it looks okay here. And, and for me it's more than enough to, to leave it just, that, just like that. The next step will be, of course, start turning on the other lights. And they are simple clones of this light I already liked. So I'll turn them on. There are these three lights. This one that is here on the foreground. And then this other one in the middle and this one uh, all the way back. And I'm gonna turn this on too. Also this one that it's way back here. I'll try just to check out that the light is actually that it's way back here. Yes, yes it is. Okay, so I'll make now another render and I'll try to visualize all the lights that I'm having here, that it's the sun and the four lights that are uh, filling the, this, uh, this area. As you can notice now, we have a very logical and simple lighting process. No turnarounds, no cheating, just a simple linear process. Hopefully we'll have an image that should look nice. Uh, and by looking at this area it seems that it's working working good at this point. Uh, we'll have to wait a little bit more uh, once we have uh, more objects and we have more occlusions to see actually how the things are coming out but it's pretty nice at this point. Yeah, it's it's coming out pretty well. And just to say something, remember that we're just about half in the process of lighting this San Juan de Dios image. And as you can see, well, we're having a very simple process. We're not take, trying to get as many lights as possible. We don't have a hundred lights. Uh, we're going light by light and uh, it's very, very simple. Uh, just a uh, little by little. Now I'll pause the render. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, start uh, on hiding more layers uh, so we can again test how things are coming out with more objects here. So I'll take this one uh, now and it has a lot of fruits in it. And that way I'll have a very nice uh, approach on what will happen later on the overall, overall scene. I'll hit uh, render and I'll pause the recording a little bit because this will take a while. Okay, well the render has finished. Uh, the render time was not that high, it was just about uh, around two, 2 minutes. And it's a very decent number, a very decent time because of the number of objects here and the scale of it. And we're getting a very nice result. One of the things that I want to point out is the quality of the lights that we're having. I think uh, the light coming from the sun, it's giving us a very nice effect here. You can see the results on the floor are very nice, the reflections and, and bleedings. And if you remember, about uh, a couple of minutes ago, I showed you some reference pictures I have on how I wanted my fruits to look like. And I'm beginning, I'm beginning to get uh, very close to these uh, photographs that, that I have. Look at this. You can hear, you can see here, we are comparing and it looks quite similar. And remember that we'll still be doing a 
color correction process, post-processing uh, levels and contrast adjustments in the final scene. And we're getting very nice results even though we're having just a couple of lights. Just remember remember that we're just using uh, the lights over here and the sunlight coming from the outside. And this is just the only interactions that are in this, in this area now. And it looks like we're going in the right path here. The next step will be to think about what's missing on my scene, what we need to put on it to enrich it. And for me, there are two very important things missing. The first one is we need a fill light that helped me define all these details we have here and also the ones we have down here too. And why not having a, a, a backlight that makes this rim around the fruits and make it more uh, separate separate them from, from the background and make them look shiny and nice. That's why I have here, here in my setup, in my light setup, these two lights that I'm going to show you now. I have a light that, that it's over here, that as you can see, it's called it Puesto Back. Um, this light, it's a simple photometric spotlight. As you can see, the parameters are not that uh, strange, just uh, almost simple, and, the, and they are very high. But remember, if it looks good, it's okay. Uh, the shadows are hard shadows, because the light is coming from a point and not from a disk or a bigger surface. And now we'll make a render with these lights and the fill light that uh, I have over here. I'll try to... I'll, I'll turn off this layer so you can see it better now. Oops, and as you can see now, on this side I have I have the actual field light that it's uh, here. I wasn't able to look at it to see it. And and now this is the light that will reveal all the details that I can't see now with this setup. Okay, we'll start the rendering with this two lights filled and see what comes out of it. If you happen to have this uh, kind of overexposure in your viewport, the shortcut for fixing this, it's, uh, it's very simple, it's just Control L on your keyboard and you'll be able now to fix this. I'll unhide again all the structures and fruits and let's see how the render comes out with these two new lights turned on. I'm gonna pause here Okay, the render is over now. As you can see, the render time didn't get up to too much from the past render, just a couple of seconds more. And here we have our original image and the new one. And the only difference on this uh, between these two are these two new lights that uh, we just happened to put in the scene. Actually, they were three. Uh, one V-ray light pointing to to this area of the of the image that it's the one revealing all this information that we didn't have and it's a very soft light uh, that just make us reveal all the information that we didn't have we have this backlight that uh, it's coming from the back of, of here that it's helping us to define the, the edges of the fruits over here and also over here too as you can see here in the foreground the shadows don't get um, as darker as on the other on the previous image and also it will reveal all of these fruits that uh, that we didn't saw in the beginning and we have also this uh, light this fill light coming from the top that defines the floor and these fruits on the foreground okay now I would like to make a small resume on what we have for now on the beginning we started with our sun once we were happy with the results coming from the sunlight, uh, we set up one light coming uh, from, from this part of the image here. That is the one giving us all the light in this area. Then we added these other lights that are on the middle and on the background. And then we get to this stage that we are now, in which we had a fill light coming from the front, one uh, helping us in the backlight, and this other one that it's filling mostly this part of the of the floor and these fruits. I just want to tell you that at this point we're more or less about 70 or 80% of the total amount of lights and work that we'll have 
this this image as you can see for sure there are no tricks no strange parameters or things with V-Ray I just I'm just using simple as the uh, solid rocks plugin uh, script that uh, help us with the rendering it's just using light cache for the primary bounces and also for the secondary bounces and uh, with the lowest quality on, on, on it again there are no strange tricks nothing fancy just light some the sunlight some lights here and as you can see we're getting a nice result this is very important because there are many people that that get very complex in, on when lighting their scenes they got very very tangled in these uh, lights and stuff and uh, we have to think just like a, a actual photographer a cinema photographer or a, or a studio photographer that are they just begin adding lights and testing uh, instead of thinking on the technical side and getting strange solutions for simple things our last step will be to of course turn on the the final lights then I'm gonna explain what are they and what they're intended for okay okay let me just uh, take a look here in my scene for you to look and if we take a look at, at our last render uh, there's a very dark part in this uh, left right side of the image and I would like to have some some more information here more more uh, presence the 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 fruits and the structures so in this point I'm putting here a spotlight so I can have a very precise uh, control of the light on the area we can get very very specific control on this on this area it is a simple photometric spot I'll turn it on and you'll see it give us a very nice uh, light here in this part also I'm gonna turn on this spot uh, mainly because there are some things that I wanna make sure they are light, light in the foreground of the scene uh, here just here in this area now now the last uh, lights that I'm gonna turn on are the ones that are in this side and what they're gonna do is give me some more feel light in the scale area that <laughs> well at this point is not present but here you'll have the scale hanging and it will give them a special accent on this uh, particular object that we'll have around here and this is all of what I did for the lightning of the San Juan scene at this point nothing else now I'll hit render so we can compare on what we have and our final setup um, I'll pause the video for the render to process and not keep you here okay now the render is over just to make clear I unhide a lot of things here so we can get more elements going on and the render time is very decent uh, just a little bit above three minutes and it's an amazing time because uh, consider that here more or less in this area we're having around a uh, hundred million faces and uh, this is the advantage of getting V-Ray proxies in your scene the memory management and uh, and everything it's it's very efficient V-Ray is making a great job for sure and one good tip about speed and uh, managed processing in, in V-Ray is uh, this little parameter we have over here. Um, when, when you feel like your scene is uh, not that uh, efficient, uh, mainly because of the manage memory management or the amount of things you have, try to increase this number and you'll notice that the um, memory management will be better and you'll get uh, slower render times at some point well now the difference between these two renders is mainly uh, three more lights that we added in specific points one that filled this lower part of the scene you can notice there's, there's more light here the other one goes in this area that uh, some cloth will be hanging around here Remember I have a spotlight in this area that it's giving you giving us a very nice uh flood of light here. And the third one was a fill light specific for this scale here. And well, this is all that I did for the 
lighting of the scene. Uh, uh, later on, we'll be working on post-production processes that give us a little bit more of enhancement on the scene. And, uh, well, you can see now we're getting, uh, uh, at this point, uh, we're very close uh, to the original, well, to the references we, we used to work with. Just take a quick look, uh, comparing with this image. And all of this with a very, very simple uh, light setup. Le uh, let's just take a quick look on what we did. Just a simple sunlight, some lights that are here in this area, uh, backlight, some other lights just to give a little bit more light on the foreground, and a very diffuse uh, bureau light for, for flooding the general uh, scene. My last uh, advice is to study a lot of photography. It's very important to know how the real cameras work, why the photographers use certain uh, uh, film sensibilities, some uh, specific lenses and focal distances and all of that. It's very important. It'll give you very good background on on what you have to do when lighting a scene. I hope this advice and my way of work that maybe is not the, the best of, of all, all of them could give you a good uh, option to light your scene. And we'll see you now in the on the next chapter. Thanks a lot for for your time. See you then. See you then. See you then.